Hi, my name is Hubert Baumeister and in this screencast I want to show you how to create a very first simple web service with OpenESB and a very small client testing that web service. The basic point is that we have already started or installed OpenBSB if we have started uh, the OpenASB IDE, which is NetBeans, and we have to create a new project. So we create a new project, and since this is a web service, it should be a um, project that runs on an application server. And to do this, we choose Java Web, Web Application. So a web service is just an instance of a web application. So we choose next. We give it a name and we want to call it Hello World Service. We also give it a, sp a place where to put. Next we decide on what uh, application server the application should run and default is Glassfish 2.x so we don't change anything. We don't have to change all uh, any of the other variables. We don't need any further libraries like the Spring or Java uh, server faces so we just say finish here without clicking anything and we're getting a project created. So, after the creation of the project, we are creating our first web service. To this end, we do it very simple. We use uh, Java's annotation to create automatically web service from Java programs. So, what we do is we create a Java class. And we call this Java class Hello World Service. It needs to reside in a package, so we call it DTUWS. And this is uh, the Java class. I'm just removing, removing the comments for better viewing. And what we have to do is we write, have to write a method or, and we call this method public uh, string hello world. And it takes a string as an argument and returns a string. And what we want to do is we want to return hello the string plus the input. So we get uh, we send the service like world and it will return hello world. Now to make this a web service, we have to add an annotation here and we have to say to the class. It's a Java X JWS web service. And that's it. That's by default publishes all the public methods of that class as web, web services. This annotation language is much more complex and allows you to much more a fine-grained control what are the various web services and how do the web services appear to the outside for our first experiment this is pretty much sufficient so we uh, what we do is we deploy the code to the web service and that we then have uh, a web service. Now we can see here that the uh, we have deployed a web service, Hello World web service. To check that we actually do have deployed it, we go to the administrator interface which is localhost and by default it's on the port 4080 4080. We have to wait a little bit uh, because 
now Java script pages will be compiled on the fly and this takes uh, some time for the application to start. So now the application is started, we use the default admin username and admin admin as password for uh, logging in. And now we can see here we have web applications deployed and we should see our hello world web application deployed here. So here we have our hello world service and these others are other experiments and then we look into the web services and we should actually see a hello web service so both of them should be there the web application should be where there and the hello world service one way of checking that so this is important that uh, the web service appears at both places it could be that the Hello World service is appears under the web applications but not under the web service and that gives some hints to that the annotations used were not correctly or could not correctly read by the engine. Now each web service to address access a web service has associated the WSDL and we can view the WSDL and this is also important that we actually can see the WSDL that this is generated so in some cases it can happen that when uh, there are errors in deployment that the WSDL is not shown about in this case everything worked fine so we can take actually a copy of the WSDL we copy the link location and we are now proceeding to writing um, a client that accesses this web service. So to do this we create a new project which in our case then can be just a pure Java application because this is not an application to be run on a web server but just run uh, normally. So we create this and call it hello world client and we don't need to create a main class because we want to use actually JUnit tests to uh, exercise our web services and the advantage will be that this can be done automatically and I don't have to inspect any console output to determine whether uh, my web service worked correctly or not so in this case then I have to create a new test case, a new JUnit test case and I call it test hello world uh, I can give it a package, I don't have to give it a package uh, but in this case I'm going to give it a package, I create some, some source code hints I decide to use JUnit 4 framework to allow to use assertions uh, to use code annotations let's have here so the class the basic class here the relevant part of it is this part here which says a test annotation so this method will be a test and then the name can be any name and in this case it does actually nothing at the moment so the problem is that this project should know about the web service uh, that we've been using and that we uh, can use by generating stops for calling web services from WSDL and that's why we went here to WSDL, view WSDL, we copy to the link and then we can go back and we in the client actually say we create web service client this is our uh, uh, the infrastructure to be used to call web services now we have uh, copied the URL so we take the URL we have other possibilities of accessing the WSDL file but we take this one here and we just say finish and you will see that here some generation is taking place 
the WSDL is passed, classes are generated, and at the end we have a successful build and we can see in web service references that we have our hello web service here, we have furthermore the port and we have our hello world operation. Now we can actually drag and drop this into our program and this will create a static method which will call the web service for us. If we first create some service classes from this it will get the hello world service port and then it uh, on this port it calls the hello world with some arguments and this is a string argument so our test will look very simple we can say string result hello world and then we put for example as a test world and then we are using the assertion framework and say it's what we expect as the result equals hello world and uh, the result. So the first argument in an assert equal should always be the value that you expect and the second the actual value because when as we're going to see we uh, will see some uh, error message uh, telling us that if something fails the what is the expected and the actual value and if you turn around the arguments then this does not work. Now we are done so far we can actually run the file and we can see that hopefully everything works and actually we can see we go to here to test results and we can actually see that test hello world failed and it failed because we expected uh, a hello world here so hello with a blank world in but we only got hello world without a blank so that is we can actually okay we can see there are two errors here we can have here's this w this is wrong now we can still run it again actually we should use test file here uh, so that we immediately switch to the test view and again of course this fails because you now service that we have implemented we have forgotten to put in a space here now we move back to the web service project uh, add the space say control s in this case we can actually see here below that uh, the service is already deployed so whenever I change something in the service it will be automatically deployed then I can go to back to my test can run the test and the test succeeds.